Well, hello everyone. My name is Wyatt Ross. And I'm Alex Rodriguez. Um, we're from the University of Cincinnati and we're excited to present our entry for the 2020 Solar District Cup New Mexico State University use case. Um, our team was composed of Alex and I as the team leads along with our faculty advisor, Dr. Amanda Webb. Um, and other team members included Hunter Swope, John Rule, Jordan Crawford, Daniel Castor, and Joshua Parisi. Our industry advisors included Rex Solar, Duke Energy, um, AMS, and Atelier 10. Go to the next slide. We will start by discussing the project briefed as outlined by the competition, um, the project development process that we took, and lastly, our final proposal to New Mexico State University. In 2009, NMSU signed the American College and University President's Climate Commitment, which committed them to reaching carbon neutrality by 2050. This commitment eventually led to NMSU developing a sustainability master plan, which includes their goal of carbon neutrality, along with several other sustainability initiatives, which can be seen here. Most important in this competition is NMSU's desire to develop their own renewable energy resources. It was with these goals in mind that the competition outlined NMSU's request for a 20-year power purchase agreement for a solar PV and storage system on NMSU property. The challenge being to provide as much renewable energy to NMSU as possible, while providing a positive MPV for all parties and ensuring produced electricity is self-consumed on campus. To begin developing our team's proposal, we first conducted a full site assessment to determine optimal locations for battery storage and PV systems on NMSU's property. The available areas for development included the university's main campus park, as well as a 30 acre lot of land east of campus on Geothermal Drive. While several types of analyses were conducted, one carefully considered factor were potential limitations for points of interconnection available at each site. While on-campus interconnections are readily available at building level distribution systems, it was determined any system located at the geothermal lot would require to connect at the adjacent geothermal substation. As the substation is owned by the El Paso Electric Company, it is assumed a POI agreement would require a medium voltage interconnection with a 2 MBA power limit. Once the site analysis was complete, we began assessing the university's electrical load profile. While interval data was provided for 10 on-campus buildings, these represent only a third of campus, leaving about a million square feet unaccounted for. NMSU is billed for electricity consumed by the entire campus, and in order to provide a design that adequately addresses the campus as a whole, it was necessary to model the remaining buildings. Using Python, the available load profiles were grouped based on building typology, and then the estimated for the load for the remaining buildings on campus. You can see how combining the metered profiles in blue and the model profiles in yellow creates a shift in peak energy use seen in the full campus profile in green. The electricity bill to NMSU falls under El Paso Electric rate number 26. This rate has four main components, a base meter fee, energy charges, demand charges, and cost riders. The off-peak energy charges are in effect for 93% of the year and are 94% New Mexico commercial energy rates. With such low energy charges for a majority of the year, developing a cost competitive PPA was very challenging as off-taker financial viability was a guiding metric for determining the PPA price. Using rate number 26 and the derived full campus load profile, NMSU's annual electricity utility bill was calculated. It was seen that NMSU pays about $3.6 million per year on electricity, which includes roughly $1.6 million of non-time dependent cost riders. To evaluate savings opportunities for the off-taker and in turn warrant a higher PPA price, three main strategies were studied, including on-peak energy reductions, off-peak energy reductions, and demand management. Off-peak energy charges are in effect for 93% of the year and stipulate a rate of 0.4 cents per kWh. Targeting off-peak energy combined with non-time dependent cost riders could yield a maximum return of $1.8 million. As there is no targeted time period, this strategy poses no potential cost savings risk to NMSU. On-peak energy charges are in effect from Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., June through September and stipulate a rate of 9.1 cents per kWh. Targeting on-peak energy combined with the cost riders could yield a maximum return of $2.1 million. As on-peak energy charges have a specific window in which they are in effect, this strategy poses slight risk to NMSU in that savings must be achieved within this specific window. Demand charges are billed to NMSU based on the highest of the max monthly demand, a 65% 12 month ratchet, or a minimum of 6,000 kilowatts. Targeting demand charges could yield a maximum return of $1.3 million. 
However, this strategy carries the most risk as consistent peak reduction must be achieved to ensure monthly savings. To study the risk of demand management strategy, we analyze NMSU's load profile as shown in the graph with each line representing a single day. Having enough storage to effectively reduce the sustained six hour peak seen in the profiles presents cost savings risks in addition to the need for a high power long duration storage system. While battery storage can be effective for peak management, its effectiveness is diminished when demand peaks are sustained for long periods as seen here. This limits the value stacking opportunities for implementing a battery storage system. Three conclusions were made that heavily guided our design's development. First, in regard to the site, it was determined that both the on-campus location and geothermal lot should be utilized to develop the proposed system. Second, NMSU's utility rate structure limits cost savings opportunities and limits the economic value stacking of large battery storage systems. And finally, studying the risks associated with their rate structure and load profile, it was determined that on-peak energy savings must be targeted to best minimize risk and maximize returns. In order to increase system production when energy rates are the highest, a study was conducted to evaluate how PV configurations align with NMSU's on-peak energy rate window. While it was found an array facing 180 degrees south, south with a 15 degree tilt produces the most electricity annually, it was also determined that most of this production does not fall within NMSU's on-peak period, as can be seen in this graph here. By rotating the array's azimuth to 225 degrees southwest and raising the tilt angle from 15 to 30 degrees, production is shifted deeper into NMSU's on-peak period. While this reduces the total amount of electricity produced annually, it results in a 6% increase in electrical cost savings for NMSU. With these two adjustments, the PV array's electrical production also fills out enough of NMSU's on-peak period that battery storage size can be greatly reduced, creating a cost-effective strategy for supplementing on-peak production with battery storage. With this strategy in mind, as well as other university goals, we arrived at our final proposal. You can go to the next slide, thank you. A 3.3 megawatt ground mount PV array with a 225 degree azimuth and a 30 degree tilt angle, along with a one megawatt, four megawatt hour DC coupled battery storage system was designed at the geothermal site. This array is a fixed tilt array consisting of 8,064 bifacial panels. Due to light colored soil in the region, bifacial panels were selected to increase production early in the day when the panels are not directly facing the sun. This contributes to low voltage harvesting for charging the battery system and has the potential to increase total production by 9% annually. Combined with the array's orientation, these design choices min minimize operational costs and maximize production during NMSU's on-peak period. The DC coupled battery system was selected based on several factors, including a lower balance of system costs and the ability to charge from clipping recapture, which guarantees the project can monetize 100% of federal tax, tax credits. Because the system connects at the geothermal substation, it is limited to providing a maximum of two MVA to the university distribution system at any given time. The operational parameters of the system are monitored by a power plant controller. In order to maximize on-peak production, the battery storage system and PV array work in parallel to maintain a system output as close to the two MVA interconnection limit as possible between 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. daily. As can be seen in the graph, if PV production falls below two megawatts during that on-peak period, the battery system will discharge to maintain total power being produced. When PV production exceeds the interconnection limit, the excess power is clipped by the inverter and stored by the battery system and then self-consumed later in the day when PV production wanes around 4 p.m. In order to verify that the ground mount and battery storage system achieve reduction in NMSU's on-peak electricity purchase, purchases, a custom Python tool was used to compare the university's load profile with and without the proposed systems. On the right, you can see from the increase in yellow and green hours that the system does reduce the annual amount of electricity NMSU needs to purchase from the El Paso Electric Company. But what we were most concerned with is reducing purchases during this on-peak window of the year where energy costs are the highest for NMSU. As you can see, the proposed system provides significant savings for NMSU, a 20% improvement from the base case, which account, amounts to a reduction of over one gigawatt hours annually. In addition to the ground mount and battery storage system at the geothermal lot, a second array is proposed on campus. This array is a 300 kW carport canopy system located in the heart of New Mexico State's campus and will contribute half a gigawatt of renewable energy annually. We selected the location of the canopy array based on an analysis of outdoor thermal comfort on campus. By providing additional shading, 
the arrays reduce heat island effect and contribute to a more walkable campus. As seen in the image, the areas under the canopy improve outdoor thermal comfort by 42 degrees Fahrenheit. The canopies also are angled to collect rainfall and reduce irrigation demands of NMSU. Once the design was complete, a verification process was taken to ensure our design comp compl complies with all regulatory measures. This includes permitting requirements, zoning codes, and campus planning jurisdictions. In addition, a distribution system impact analysis was conducted to ensure NMSU's existing distribution system was capable of hosting the proposed energy resources without any adding any voltage violations, power quality issues, or thermal overloading. In order to ensure maximized returns for all investors, a yield-based partnership flip was used to structure the project's finances. Key aspects of the financial structure include engaging with tax equity partners to monetize all tax benefits, establishing an 8.5 cent per KWH PPA price, and selling the renewable energy credits generated from the project to NMSU. The additional sale of renewable energy credits allows NMSU sole rights to claiming the credits associated with the renewable energy generated. This additional revenue also allows desirable returns for tax, tax equity investors and the developer. The capital cost of the project is 6.1 million. Oh, sorry. There are no, yeah, right there. The capital cost of the project is $6.1 million, with the PV portion at about $1.25 per watt installed and the storage system at $420 per KWH. Uh, next slide, please. At year six, tax equity reaches the set hurdle rate of 7.5% after which the project returns are shared 95% to 5% in favor of the developer. At the end of the 20-year PPA term, the project company, tax equity, and developer receive attractive returns on their investment, as well as NMSU sees about $200,000 in present value savings. As financial returns of intermittent energy resources are highly dependent on weather variations and in turn production variations, a production risk assessment was conducted using 10 years worth of New Mexico NOAA data. The probability distribution and associated risk levels can be seen on the graph. The project's MPV hits zero only at an annual production of 4.5 gigawatt hours, which has an annual likelihood of 6% of happening. In conclusion, um, next slide please, sorry. In conclusion, with this proposal, NMSU will move one step closer to achieving their goal of carbon neutrality, removing 8.5 million pounds of CO2 from their annual emissions. By providing 6.8 gigawatt hours of renewable energy to the university annually, they are also on track to reach their 100% renewable energy portfolio goal by 2050. While predisposed to challenging financial constraints, this PPA also meets all requirements of the project brief, including financial viability for all parties. And in addition to these achievements, the proposal reduces water consumption for irrigation by 500,000 gallons, improves walkability on campus, and lastly, ensures that the proposed systems are visible to all, highlighting the work NMSU is doing for a more sustainable future. Thank you.